Hey Floss Tube! This is Carla with Rolex Stitches again, coming in for my third episode. Um, it's August 26th here in Japan, Monday. Um, it is our, for our kids first day of school here on base and it feels weird to not have the kids in the house right now. But hey, I'm gonna enjoy the quiet and see if I can get through this without the cat messing with me. He's already winding around my legs. Um, I'm the one that's allergic allergic in the family, but I am the one that he is obsessed with. <laughs> Go figure, just like a guy, right? Ooh, get off that, don't do that. Stop, 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 stop. <laughs> Maybe I'll leave that in, we'll see. Okay, so let's see, um, catching up from last time, I have a couple finishes. I am gonna go ahead and do a whip parade of all my current um, projects that I have started. Um, I'm gonna give you some catch up on stuff that's been happening here in Japan. We've done some really cool things in the past two weeks. And I got some haul, and I'm just gonna jump right into it. So, let's see, for what I'm working on right now, is I told you guys how I was going to be starting um, Christmas in pink and you guys helped me pick out the dude a little bit of a the darker gray for the fabric and I really think this white pops very well on it I was worried about that because the lighter one is like a lighter like a lilac almost but um, this gray just just hits it really right sorry about the glare but that's how, how far I've gotten on this one but and like I said, this is going to be a, um, a gift for one of my husband's co-workers who's been kind of, um, who's taken us under her wing here since we've gotten to Japan and just been amazing. So you got, oh, and thank you guys so much for your recommendations on skin tone changes. Um, I've looked at Lord Lividan and I know a lot, several of you have tagged me in some charts and um, I think I have it figured out. So Thank you again so much to those who who helped me with that because I was kind of at a, at a loss. Um, so yeah, that's one of my current projects. Uh, the other one right now is, of course, I'm sure you're seeing a lot of this, is um, Stioch Along. This is Stioch number seven. Um, still a mystery. We have no idea what's going on. The second pattern just dropped yesterday. So I am, I have not done that one yet, but I am done with pattern one. Pattern two, sorry, we'll have a lot of, uh, see a lot more blends and some little fill-ins here. The popular guess right now, everyone is saying Golden Girls, but I don't know, I, <laughs> um, it could be that, hey, I don't know, but I don't see M and Matt, um, the masterminds behind Steel Chalong, I don't see them making it that easy for us. They're going to throw a, a wrench in it. Like, this could be completely upside down. They could flip this and it could be sideways. It could be anything. And as long as I have uh, Lady Olena here hanging out with me, I'm not too worried. It's going to be kosher. I had a lot of people um, message me on Instagram and send me messages or comments here about how I was going to organize my floss for this project because there's so many blends in this one. And I got a floss buddy flip pretty much specifically for this project. I had never had one before, but I know Michelle Bindi um, uses them religiously. And so I put pretty much all the, all the flosses that I haven't used yet back here, which are a lot. But on the front, I have them all individually labeled with the major ones, but then if we had a, when we have blends, I put the two numbers and the symbol on the actual little plastic bobbin. Then I just kind of keep them here. I've already used all these. We might use them again, we might not, but I have an extra plethora of bobbins. And also, pro tip, if you guys didn't know this, um, if, if you're freaking out about, oh, I don't wanna use all my bobbins, I didn't know this, and some of you might, but nail polish remover takes off the markings when you write on these. So I use Sharpies, um, fine point Sharpies, and I write on the actual plastic bobbin, it's a little bit of nail polish remover, swipes that right off, clean slate, you use them over and over and over again. So hopefully that helps someone because it changed my life when I figured it out. So yeah, that's where I'm at with that one. Got those two. 
just kind of fling around. What else am I working on right now? I have a whole stack of whips here next to me and some stuff's probably buried, but I'll get to that soon. Um, I did. I do have two FOs that I want to share. Um, hold please. Okay, back, sorry. It's actually three FOs. Um, I have plans on fully finishing these, but my iron's not here yet. <laughs> it's still in that other shipment and on that hella slow bo uh, boat that's coming over from the States. So um, I will show you these. Get something here to kind of put behind it. This, this is finished minus the beading. So I don't remember if I showed this to you last time or not, but this is, um, it was a Sal, happy Halloween, I just call it Halloween hats. But minus the beading, this one is done. And I don't want to put the beads on before I iron it, so hence my dilemma. But that one was really, really fun. This actually, I think, was, before being finished, it was my oldest whip. It is um, the very first Sal I ever joined. I need to check my records on that, but I'm 97% sure this is my first sale. I, of course, I made some changes. Look at that stocking. Ah. Well, it's a, it's a witch's boot, but still. I love that. I always think of Audrey whenever I see a good witch's boot. And a creepy eyeball and all sorts of funness. So yeah, minus beading, that one is done. Um, this one was just a quick start and finish that I cannot believe how fast. I started this on, I believe, Friday and finished it on Sunday morning. So mornings are for coffee and contemplation. I So again, it needs to be ironed. I already have a frame for it. I'm going to put this in our kitchen. Um, I actually just dyed this fabric black, but I don't think I left it in there long enough. So it has kind of like a, a vintage charcoal feel, vintage blackboard feel, I guess. But I'm already going through Stranger Things result, um, withdrawals after season three, Heartbreaker. Um, spoiler alert, I totally think Hop's still alive. You, can't, you, you won't be able to ever tell me that different. But love that. It's gonna go, like I said, in our kitchen. And then my last FO that I did started this when just shortly after we arrived in Japan and then I finished it just a couple days after the, the first pattern drop of Stiach number seven. <laughs> and some of you will recognize it, but it is Stiach number six from 2018. Um, again, customization that you get to pick. Your ending, I saw this ending, so home is where I cross my stitches. I, I did not originate this. This is not from me. But, oh, I saw that and I knew instantly that I had to make it. When I go through my whips, my whip parade, you're going to see there's another one. <laughs> and I didn't have that with me at the time um, when I started this one. Or I would have finished that one, but didn't have it with me. But I love these colors that I put in this one. These, um, the inside motif here is uh, hand dyed by Rolanda. It is a gorgeous limited edition that I wish I had bought all of them, but it is pretty. I am a little stressed about this one though, because it is the first time I've used supposedly not color fast floss. And I normally wash all my pieces before I, um, before I FFO them. So when everyone says, you know, if they're not color fast, you don't wash them. You don't wash them. It'll be fine, right? It'll be fine. Hope it's fine. Okay, so those are my three FOs for this week. Um, that was super fun. I had fun with all of those. I Here in a minute, I'm going to jump into my actual whip parade. But first, I'm going to show you a little bit of haul that I got. Um, first more <laughs> hand dyed by Rolanda. Some amazing flossies. Look at those colors. I don't want to get out of the package, but oh, those are yummy. Uh, my eight year old son, his, his favorite word is delicious right now. So everything, when he saw these, oh mom, 
those are delicious. And I was like, boy, yes, you are correct, sir. And then I also agree about this fabric. It is, I think it's calling, it, this needs like a mermaid something on here. Look at that watercolor. Oh, to die for. These are both 28 Alma, I believe. Even weave. Well, I think it's even weave. Pretty sure it's even weave. Oh, look at that one. I don't know what I'm going to put on there, but I'm going to have fun with it. I love her pieces. Um, aside from the fabric and that, I joined Fiberlicious's... Fiberlicious? Fiberlicious? Fabric and Floss of the Month because I am a um, gutless flip-flopper who says she's not going to buy anymore and then she buys more and more and more and more. Eh, oh well, I'm in Japan, damn it. That's what I'm gonna do. This is their fabric of the month. This is pressed petals. Let's see if you can kinda pull up that. Oh yeah, it's got some great, great modeling on there. Love that one. Again, no idea what I'm gonna do with it, but I'm gonna love it. Oh, and then this, they got, I got, the, like I said, the flosses of the month. I'll take these out because they're all different. Ba, ba, ba. Sorry about my random uh, voices that I make. Look at those, look at that perfect. I think it's gonna be great for um, Halloween or just fall. Yeah, stoked, super stoked, y'all. <sighs> what else did I get? Oh, I did, I had to get some more floss, like just um, a couple colors that I needed for another whip at the local mall. They had some DNC, DMC. I got some shiny, satiny Halloweenish fabric which was shocking because Japan doesn't really do much Halloween so and I if I and I just got some plain black if I remember correctly from my <laughs> previous attempts into sewing this is a bitch to sew to keep it straight and to keep it with the rest of it so I'm um, eh. <laughs> Not super enthused about that, but it's really cute, and it was the only Halloween fabric that I found. And I want to do some finishes with this kind of stuff. I want to do like maybe some wall hangings, or um, some pillows. So, those are things. Last piece of haul that I went thrifting. Hey y'all, what's up with that? I got kind of like jealous of seeing everyone's cool things that they found. You know, they're the the trash to treasures. And here at the base thrift store, I found this thing. <laughs> Just saw it, so you hang it, your wall, whatever. It does open. You put keys or whatever in there, and that comes out. And that's calling for a cross stitch. That's calling for some sort of piece that says, um, welcome to this hive of villainy or something. I don't know what, but I'm going to put it in there and I'm going to hang it right by our front door and say, welcome, bitches, because bitches are welcome. And on a dollar. Actually, there was a sale, so I think I got it for 60% off. I paid 40 cents for this. 40. Win-win. I wanted to say thank you to some of the people that gave me amazing shout outs in the past week or so. Um, I know one was Michelle B Bendy Stitchy floors me anytime I hear my name or anyone talking about me on on YouTube it's like holy shit that just happened and it happened several times this week which is crazy to me <laughs> so Michelle did it and then I got another one from Sarah King of um, our uh, our kingdom of stitches our kingdom of stitches that sounds right and then also another Carla but this time with a K uh, Carla being crafty and all three of them have amazing YouTubes. I'm sure if, you have, if you're watching me, you've seen them. They're wonderful. Um, each one has just a different vibe that just brings something great to, to each video. So go check them out, of course. But thank you, ladies, for 
wonderful welcomes. I appreciate it. Um, who I'm watching right now, I totally binged all of Daphne's Mama Metzger's videos. She makes, she just hits me right in the giggle dick sometimes. I can't, <laughs> and I don't even think she's trying, she's definitely not trying to be funny, but I relate to her on such a hard level because she nerds pretty hard. And she tries to be low key about it sometimes, but it just oozes out of her. Daphne, I love you. And I need an update on the on the Lowry stand mystery. Who took your Lowry stand, girl? I mean, who dismantled, I'm sure it was one of the kids, but what'd they do with it? <laughs> I'm invested, we need an update. Um, Kansas City girl in a uh, Colorado world, loving her, she is amazing. Um, again, <laughs> makes me giggle a lot. Uh, um, a Etsy shop that, I've, that I got some stuff from and loving is uh, stitches.esq. Diana, I believe her name is, is the shop owner. Um, I haven't seen her on FlossTube or anything, but she has a really, she's pretty, prominent or she's active on Instagram and she's got a great Etsy shop. So check them out. I, hopefully I'll remember to link everything down below. Uh, what else? Of course I watch all my normals. If anyone else, so here, do this for me. So down below, I want you to comment with some of your favorite, not super well-known floss tubers. I obviously love the favorites and you know the ones that we know all the time but again i'm still trying to to get into it more and more and find more people that i love and y'all are the way i can do that so share it with me drop some drop some links down below and let me know who you're watching um there is one kind of random tangent that i need to take you guys on and daphne if you're listening um julie uh, Kansas City Girl in a Colorado World, if you're listening. Uh, Michelle Bendy Stitchy. Uh, Jennifer Whistlestop Stitcher. I, I, all of you and anyone else that I'm, that I'm missing or that you think would be interested in this, y'all need to tell them about this video because I need to talk to someone about a book series that I have loved for years and I've noticed that, I've, that some of you, especially the ones I just mentioned, are loving it as well. So it's by Sarah J. Mass. Is Throne of Glass. The Akatar, uh, A Court of Thorns and Roses is her other series. And I love that one too. But Throne of Glass, top shelf for me. Ladies, I know you guys love them too. I've seen your badges, your pins, your needle minders. I've seen you all geeking out over it. And I'm right there with you. Hardcore Rola Rolaian, Ro Rowan and Aelin fan. Ship them. But more than that, I also love Lysandra to death. Like, she's to die for. Anyways, tangent. What I'm saying is, is there's enough of us that have enough of an interest in this particular series. I need artwork that we can turn into some sort of pattern. I'm not gonna turn it into a pattern. I can't do that. I'm not, that's beyond my pay grade. I don't have that type of creativity or the talent to do that. Someone around here does though, and I know some of her artwork by uh, Charlie Bowater. Um, I think Charlie Bowater has some patterns of her artwork on artisty, artsy. But anyways, I want either like, we can go full tilt on this and do a full coverage piece of like a big piece of her fan artwork, or we can do a couple motifs. I need something, because I did have one piece from like that I did a long ass time ago. It was um, Don't Let the Hard Days Win from a court of, I think it was Aka, was it Akatar? Maybe it was the second one, Akamath. A Court of Mist and Fury. That was a quote from that one. It was one of, a quote that one of the side characters say and it just resonated with me really well. Don't let the hard days win because we all have them and we all have to know that We've gotten through all the previous ones. We, we just got to keep pushing through and get through the next ones. Loving that, but I need something from Throne of Glass. I need, it could, like I said, it can be big. It can be kind of small. I prefer both. I want to stitch Throne of Glass and someone needs to help make that happen. Um, I will throw money at it. 
and put it that way. I'm a, I put my money where my mouth is on this, but I don't know how to do it. <laughs> so y'all message me on here, um, comment, message me on, on Instagram, Rolodex, whatever. But we need to make this happen because there's enough of us that love it. And I'm sure other than just what the six people that I just named, there's a lot more out there as well. Off my soapbox, hit me up with some suggestions and what we're going to do about this because I'll fund the damn thing. <laughs> okay, so now I'm going to start my whip parade. Um, I'm going to pull up and bear with me while I'm pulling some of these up because I tried to lay them out and get them slightly ready for us, but we all know how things go when I try to prepare. Shit goes sideways. So, one that I love... <laughs> One that I very much want to work on again, but one that I have not done a whole lot of work on is Clouds Factory Epic Harry Potter. This is how much I have done. Um, you'll notice, obviously, I did a lot of color changes. I didn't like the random white that they put up here with the little flowers that for the house colors. So I changed a lot of that. I'm going to do this uh, sparkle ass hair color metallic over here as well for all the houses excuse me i just belched on camera my bad i had a burrito earlier i love this i think this is dmc maybe canadian nights i'll have to check that and, and get back to you but this is a piece of 14 count hand dye ice dyed ada Look at that. It just keeps going, y'all. It's huge because it's a huge, epic pattern. But also, I plan on doing a lot of the modifications that I've seen some that I've seen on Facebook, on the Facebook group, and on Instagram. I don't think I want to add all the names, but I am like um, Yvette. She is the badass of badassery on doing these modifications. They're mind blowing. And um, uh, Samantha, she's from Ireland. She does a really great, um, she did an awesome Aragog one and I think uh, Buckbeak stealing them. I've already asked permission, but stealing them and they'll be going in here on this, uh, if I don't say so myself, really cool ass piece of Ada. Like I said, my sister helped me. Um, well, I say helped me. I mostly just kind of stood there and panicked while she was like, calm down. We're just dumping dye on some ice, on some fabric. It's not that fucking real. But the way my anxiety is set up, I can't handle things that aren't um, in my exact box of norm. And that box of norm changes from minute to minute. Um, <laughs> basically. So even though it's something as little, what little is something, something as little as dyeing a piece of fabric can set me into a tailspin sometimes until someone says, hey, calm the fuck down. It'll be okay. If you don't like it, you just move on and there's other fabric. I need to remind myself of that every once in a while. So that was Harry, Epic Harry Potter by Clouds Factory. This one I think I showed the first time, but it's still a whip, so I wanted to keep it in here. It's a piece for my dad. How do I like my eggs? Um, and a cake. I still need to do... I'm taking this out. I don't, I don't know what I was thinking with trying to do that. But I was trying to do something different with the, the variegated floss. And it did not hit the mark. So, still need to work on that one. Um, I was talking before about how I also, last year was my first year of doing Steel Chalong, and um, for 2018 I mean, and this was what I started with, again a piece of, uh, I think this is Ice Dye Data, I didn't really like the red that I chose here, I don't know why I chose the red, but I need to uh, maybe just take that, those two pieces out and start again, because it's a good piece of fabric. And I think it'll be good. But still, considered a whip, so it's in my parade. Now this one. This is, this is, I love it. This is 
last year's Christmas sow from Tiny Modernist. Let's see if I can kind of show the the glitter that I did on this one. Did some modifications. I changed like up here. I um, put in a bookshelf, I think, is what I changed on that one. But I changed a lot of the colors. And I still have some more plans for this. And of course, I have to do the whole side over this way of all the, the trees and everything in the other nutcracker. But as I get through with more Halloween stitches, this will be coming back out more. And hopefully I'll have it done by Christmas. Hopefully, hopefully. There's that one. Um, I think I mentioned that I have a bit of a tiny modernist obsession. I do love her pieces. I love them. So, no surprise that I also fell for the follow your dreams stitch along. I um, am obviously very behind. Hella behind. But it'll get there. I do have the frame fully finished. I just have to fill in each individual square with the, the sayings for each month. I think we're up. maybe down to here. Maybe? Shit. Maybe down to here. I don't remember, but it's getting there. I made some modifications on this one, of course, too, because I can't handle not doing that. Um, fabric on this is, again, self-ice dyed. I think ice dyed, maybe not ice dyed. Um, kind of like a tealy blue color. Not quite aqua, a little darker. I saw that when I was working, um, listening to Floss Tube the other day, someone was going on about the Ada Army. I am one, oh, it's, it was Java Girl. 1000% here for it, girl. I am a hardcore Ada supporter. I know some people hate it and look down on it. Not there for that. I think it's beautiful. I think it's very customizable. And obviously, the majority of everything I work on is Ada. I think I might have shown this one before. This is um, ingredients for a horrific Halloween. Also, another sal. I think this one was from Stony Creek, maybe. But um, I have it down here. I'm working on Toad's Breath. Look at my little corgi butt. Look at it. That thing makes me so fucking happy. <laughs> I think she's adorable. Totally a girl. Definitely a girl. But yeah, I got hella close over here on this edge. So um, I don't think I'm going to be able to frame it as I originally thought. I think I'm going to have to do a wall hanging for it and um, do some, like some other kind of Halloween-y fabric out to the side because that's too close but hey I have some beads to do on that one um, on the top pieces so they're not chucking right along uh, I know I talked about this in my first piece or in my first video but here it is again it is my tiny modernist haunted mansion sell which I did some um, Hotel Transylvania conversions I I think I want to I want to change this something to make it a little bit more Hotel Transylvania but I don't know what yet and I did the blue moon that's my own conversion up there again this is self dyed Ada this is definitely ice dyed um, but this was Super fun. I love this piece. And I don't know why I keep not bringing it out. Why do we do that? We, we fall in love with the piece. We get all obsessed with it. And we still love it. But then for some reason we stop working. Oh, I don't know. I know why. It's because we are squirrels. And we can't handle shiny things. We're like, oh, shiny, new whip. New pattern, new pattern, new pattern. And we flit off. And we make other ones. Start on new pieces when we should be finishing our own. Preaching to the damn choir. I just have like three more and I'll be done. So bear with me. This is the Ravenclaw sigil. I It's from Etsy. It's a digital pattern. Um, there are so many blends on this. And it was my first time jumping into the arena of blending. And I got 
hella overwhelmed. So I am definitely going to need to slowly get back into this one because I remember just being freaked out. And I've got some loose stitches up there. Shit. Ah, shit balls. But this is going to be the inside of the Ravenclaw belly of the eagle. There's that one. <laughs> Remember how last time I mentioned that I do have one Hade that I started about a year ago? Um, <laughs> this is exactly how much I have done. What is that? About 300 stitches. <laughs> and I'm... I'm not going to do it. I'm not going to continue on in this fashion. Um, I don't like what I did. Is that the back? Oh, I already started ripping some of it out. That's why it looks fuzzy. I was like, shit, what'd I do? Um, I have enough of this easy grid fabric that I'm just going to take this and start up here in this corner again. Now, y'all help me out. I'm going to put another call out into the universe. Of what you think I am attempting parking I um, like I said in theory I totally understand the process but trying to keep all of the all of each individual strands straight or not straight um, organized in my head uh, it's it is it is definitely overwhelming on that but then also I think I heard something about um, tent stitches where if it's full coverage some people have hypothesized that tent stitching is the way to go. And hell, if it's already full coverage, I mean, you just double up on the strands, right? So if I normally use two, you, I use four. Does that sound right? And just make one leg. <laughs> this is a leg, in case anyone didn't you know, know Carla gestures. One leg of the X all the way across. And you don't go back and finish them off, you just leave the one leg. And you, since you have doubled the, the threads, it still looks full and proper. Is that right? Does anyone else think that's right? Am I totally wrong? <sighs> Help your girl out in the comments, please. <laughs> but yeah, I'm just going to flip it around. I'm going to start up here again. Um, this one is, um, I'll put a photo up here, Mini, no, I'm sorry, Autumn Magic by Heaven and Earth Designs. Well, it's Heaven Earth Designs and the artist is someone. Shit. It's a pretty Victorian house with Halloween autumnal colors. That's what you got. Um, for active whips, that's it. Do have two others that I don't think this can be considered a whip since I have not put one stitch in it yet, but I have it completely kitted up. This is going to be for my Millennium Falcon piece. Ah! Um, there are rumors that um, that lit, that Lollipop Stitches um, might join me in a sal, since she's, I think she's kind of stalled on hers as well. She doesn't have a whole lot done, but I am putting it on this amazing opalescent galaxy fabric from Mystic's hand-dyed fabrics. Look at that sparkle, y'all. Love it. I've done several color changes, several, it's five colors total, black, white, gray, calls for a flamingo pink and like lemon yellow, hardcore pass on those. Um, so I have switched them around. I think I'm doing a variegated color for one of them. I don't know. It'll evolve and change as I decide, but that's what I'm starting on. This. So the Falcon is what I'm going to be working on next. I'll just throw it. And then how I mentioned um, Carla being crafty earlier, she totally enabled me with Froth and Bubble from Long Dog, Long Dog Stitchers. Um, is, am I the only one that says Long Dong? And like Long Duck Dong from, <laughs> from 16 Candles? Does anyone know what I'm talking about? Oh, sexy girlfriend! All I hear every time I hear the name Long Dog Stickers. See, I said it again, Long Dog Stitchers or whatever in the frick frack it is. Anyways, froth and bubble number one. <laughs> I have the fabric, I have the call for flosses in here, 
but I'm waiting on the pattern. I ordered it from, I believe, 123 Stitch was the only one that had it in, um, in stock when I was feeling the need to spend money the other day. Um, so that's winging its way here to Japan. And hopefully next time you guys see me, I will have started this. Because I'm going to do, I am doing it on white Ada. Because I really, I want those colors to pop more. Um, I think they're beautiful on the, it looks almost like a, an antique parchment maybe. Maybe a little bit of a cream is what it's called for in the actual pattern. But it dulls out the colors. And some people like that style. I want it to pop. Especially because this is for my grandmother. Um, she passed um, a little over a year ago. And it was, uh, it was really hard because she was my best friend. She, um, <laughs> when you think about the most badass woman on the planet, Marjorie Snowden is the one who jumps to mind for me because she was everything. But that saying is so, it just, it just epitomizes everything that she thought about. Um, cause things are going to get hard and things are going to, you know, be not super important, but the way that you act during those times and after and before those times are what's most important. And that, that quote, um, from Broth and Bubble really just, it, it, it grabbed me and it needs to be my Marjorie piece. So Froth and Bubble, this is that. That's all my pieces y'all. I mean, if you could see this pile that I have of stuff that I just flung to the side, um, it looks like a hell of a lot of pieces, but I have seen some of y'all's whip parades. Holy shit stains. <laughs> um, I think eventually I'll be there with like your 90 plus whips. I totally see myself getting there because this pile is already pretty epic. Um, but I'm not there yet. But I I always have aspirations. Okay, so yeah, I think that is definitely it for all of my current whips, the ones that I'm actively working on now. I don't have any UFOs. Doesn't mean I won't have them here soon, because I probably get fed up with at least one or two pieces, but um, those are my, over, my overall pieces that I have. Um, something else that I wanted to share with you guys before I leave was I told you that, you know, since we've moved here to Japan, we have been exploring so much. We've been trying to, you know, go out and see as much as we can. And I am a water girl. I am very pale and I burn hella, hella easy, but I love being near the water. One of my favorite types of water to be near is a waterfall and to... My husband, he just hardcore the best. He's an amazing guy. He found a waterfall, actually like four or five, but one that was about an hour away from here. I'm gonna put in some footage here of um, us exploring it and being right in it. And to say that it was a highlight is to just not put enough of a, a point on it because it was absolutely spectacular, so. Here's some video of that. right? <sighs> Breathtaking. And, and it wasn't even that cold, so I was hella happy. Um, something else that we did was here, here um, right outside of the gate of um, Misawa Air Base, um, we had a parade and a festival this past weekend. 
Um, and I got some really good footage of some of the um, floats that came down our main street right when the when everything was getting dark and they're to say they're out I mean they're outstanding they're outstanding they're so intricate and there's so many people that you know went in went in and not only you know were pulling these damn things but just the artistry that went into it was absolutely fantastic so I'm gonna put some photos and maybe a couple of videos here you know I So yeah, that's some of the stuff that we've been doing here in Japan the past few weeks. Um, we have some more plans to go out and explore even more. Um, so like I mentioned prior, August is the hot month and it's absolutely sweltering. It is um, muggy and oppressive, but hopefully that will chill out here soon. Um, I think this is going to rain for the next week and a half, which some people hate, but I absolutely love. I love the rain. So that will be great won't be great for going out and you know exploring a whole lot but it'll be too it'll be cooler chooler is that what I almost said Christ all right I think that's about it for me um, thank you again so much for all of your likes and your comments and subscribing I I it really from the bottom of my heart I thank each and every one of you because it, you have You've made me feel really, really welcome and just great overall. So I look forward to sharing more of my stitching journey with you. And I'll see you in a couple weeks. Thanks again. Bye, guys.